Hello everyone, welcome to Coders Camp. We are at the 15th day of May Lead Code Challenge and the problem we are going to cover is valid number. So the input given here is a string which consists of a number where either it can be an integer or decimal and we have to return true or false if a number is valid or not. So let's understand this problem with an example. So there are a lot of conditions given in the problem statement to understand whether it is a valid number or not. So let's go through the conditions one by one in order to approach this problem. The, so the first simple rule given here is the valid number can be an integer or decimal. So let's start with integer as it is having a very less number of conditions. So if it is an integer, it should have at least one number. So such a basic condition. So at least one number means it can be one number or one, two or one, two, three or any number of digits it can have and plus or minus sign is optional. So next moving on to a decimal number, a decimal number should have plus or minus sign. It is also optional again. And the second rule given here is a dot should be followed by any number, at least one number or a dot can be followed by a number that is simple a number followed by dot or dot followed by a number. So it is not necessary that it should have a number before and after dot. So without any number before and after dot is also allowed or it can have numbers on both the ends that is before dot as well as after dot. So now other optional thing is e that is exponential value after the decimal point. So now we have seen the valid cases. So these conditions says the number is valid. We have also need to know what are the invalid cases to approach this problem. So here comes the invalid cases. So the first example given here is 99 e power 2.5. This is invalid because after e that should not be decimal. So after e it can be a whole number either it can be any of any digits but it should not have a decimal or a plus or minus sign. So this is invalid. So that's why the first case is invalid. Moving on to a second case, which is minus minus six. Obviously it is having more than one sign. Either it can be plus or minus. It should have only one sign that too at the index zero. And moving on to case three, again, it is similar to the previous example. And moving on to case four, ABC, it doesn't have any digits or E. It just simply uh, alphabets or string. So it is invalid. Moving on to the next condition again, only E is allowed in case of characters, A is not allowed. Moving on to our next example, 1 E. So E is allowed, but it should have digits after E. So after and before E as well. So it should have at least a single digit after E. Either it can be 7, 8 or whatever or any number of digits. But as we saw in the first example, it should not have a decimal point or plus or minus sign. And the next example is E3. Again, as per the previous example, it should have a number before E. And finally, 1E, 3E, it is having more than 1E. It should have only 1E as per the problem statement. So here we have seen invalid cases as well. So how are we going to approach this? Though this problem is having a lot of conditions to confuse us, but this is going to be a very easy approach by using these two, four variables. So these four variables are Boolean variables, which is going to have the values true or false based on the conditions or the characters given in the input string. So first variable point present is nothing but if there is a decimal point present in the given string, then it is going to be true. So whenever we pass the string or iterate the characters in the given input string, for the first time it encounters a decimal point, it is going to be updated to true. And E present is similar. Whenever it see E for the first time in the given string, then it is going to become true. If not, it stays false. And number present, whenever it see the number first, it is going to be true. And number after E is going to be true for the first time itself. I'll let you know why later. So now we are going to iterate through our given string character by character and update these four variables. And Parallelly, we are going to check if any of the condition is pointing at the invalid number. If it is an invalid number, then straight away we are going to return false. If not, if the iteration is completed and there is no false returned, in that case, the number is true, which is a valid number and we are going to return true. So what are the conditions we are going to check here is first more than one decimal. There should be only one decimal point in the given number. 
So if there is more than one decimal point, we are going to return false. So how do we find there is one more decimal point? So point present is going to be false initially. And whenever first it encounters a decimal, it is going to be true. So when it encounters a second decimal point, it is going to check this condition whether point present is true. If it is true, which means we have already have a decimal point in that case, we are going to return false. So the first condition is over. Moving on to second condition, which is decimal after E. It is again going to be an invalid case. So how are we going to check that? So whenever there is a E, that is E present for the first time, it is going to become true. So in that case, when there is a decimal point is being encountered, it is going to check whether my E present is true or not. So if it is true in that case, we are having a decimal point after E. So we are going to return false again for this case. So overall for these two cases, whenever there is a decimal point, we are going to check whether there is E present already and point present already. If any of these conditions become true, then we are going to return false. So moving on to our third condition, no numbers before E. So whenever we encounter a number for the first time, the number present is going to be true. So when we encounter E in our given string, we are going to check whether number present is true, which means it is having a number before E. If not, if it is false, in that case, we are going to return false to this case. And moving on to a fourth case, which is more than one E. So again, E present is going to be true when it see a E for the first time. So when it encounters one more E in the given string, and it is going to check whether E present is true. And if it is true, then it is going to return false. So overall for these two cases, whenever it encounters an E, it is going to check two conditions, whether number present and E present. If any of these conditions are going to be true, we are going to return false. So hope you are making it up to this. So moving on to our next condition, which is plus or minus sign in between. So we should have only one plus or minus sign at the zeroth index only. So if there is one more sign in between and it is not at index zero, then we are going to return false. So plus or minus sign after E. So whenever we encounter a plus or minus sign, we are going to check whether E present is true, which means we already have encountered a E in the given string, which means we are having a plus or minus sign after E. So in that case, it is going to be an invalid case. We are going to return false. So yes, we have covered all the invalid cases. So finally, it's time to return true since all the invalid cases are crossed and we have to return true that the number is valid. So I have said number after E is set to true for the first time. So we set number after E is equal to true whenever we see a number in the given string. So in that case, if there is a number 4, 5, E, 5, so whenever we see 4, 5, we update both number present as well as number after E present to true. And when we encounter E, we check all these invalid conditions and also update number after E to false. Which means so far whatever it has been updated, whenever it saw a E, it will be updated to false. So when it see a number again, it is going to update number after E to true, which means there is a number after E. So this is going to be a valid case. So that is how number after E is going to work. So hope you're understanding this approach. So we are going to iterate the given string only once. And so it is going to run in big O of n constant time. So let's go to code now. So yes, here's our code. We have declared all of four boolean variables where we set number after e alone to true so as discussed we have checked all these six cases that is where if it is a number we are going to update both number present and number after e to true if it is a dot we are going to check whether already e is present or already a decimal is present in that case they both are going to be an invalid case so we are going to return false if not we are going to update point present is equal to true same way when E is encountered in the given string, then we are going to check whether E is already present or number is not present. In that case, it is an invalid case written false. If not, we are going to set number after E to false and E present to true. And finally, coming to the plus or minus sign, if the in 
index is not is equal to 0, then we are going to return false. Or if the previous character is not is equal to e, then we are going to return false. And finally, we are going to return whether number present and then number after e is true, which means number present both in front as well as back. That is the reason we set number after e to true at the first line. So yes, that, that's it. Let's run and try. So let's submit. Yes, let's submit. Yes, the solution is accepted and runs in 2 milliseconds. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe and let me know in comments. Thank you.